Hello and welcome to the Katie's Arms, uh, for which I'm two minutes early, although in some regards I'm actually, I think, 24 hours late, am I? I'm supposed to do Katie's Arms, or our deal was that I was doing these on a Friday at 8 o'clock UK time. We're now on a Monday and it is 9 o'clock. So I'm guessing what we're saying here is my scheduling is a little bit off. I do apologise for that. I was absolutely running on the road, not just running, but flat out. And so I didn't quite make our time slots. Um, but right now I've escaped for a half an hour to myself so that I can be with you guys. And I guess first up is that I hope everyone's doing all right. Thank you so much for being part of this Instagram family. Um, you'll know if you're a regular attender to the Katie's Arms, uh, this is really supposed to be your platform and your Instagram account um, so that you can all find each other and know that you're not going absolutely mad in all the bloody madness that you're surrounded by and that there's other people who do think just like you. Um, the Katie's Arms came about because of course the pubs were bloody well shut. So we decided that this would be our online pub for now. Although I think actually, amazingly, you guys are now allowed to actually sit in a chuffing beer garden in minus two degrees with like one other person who you're definitely not related to and have never touched in your life as long as you're wearing 85 masks and scuba gear. I mean, how just brilliant is that? I mean, that's just, you know, that's just freedom right there, isn't it? That's the freedom your grandfather's fought for, is that you'll be able to drink half a chuffing cider in the freezing cold, dressed in full fricking snorkel gear. Yeah, really, potato in a wig, Boris Johnson. Um, this will be my first Katie's arm standing up. People usually ask if I've been drinking or if I'm on drugs, and none of those things are actually true. I suppose it's just that when you're around people and things are happening and your life is kind of surrounded by other humanity where you get to actually feel each other and feed off each other like we used to do, uh, life becomes much more tolerable. So please know that I do think of everybody in the UK often. I'm not gloating at all the fact that I am free here, even though I'm in California, which is kind of blue or supposed to be blue and incredibly locked down. Uh, I do think of you all often. I speak of you often. And when I share the stories of what's going on in the UK, nobody here can believe it. I mean, like, there's gasps in the crowd if you tell them that my children have to wear a sticker to show that they're unclean in class because they don't want to do a damn test for something that's never going to impact them and never really existed as a big problem for the young people anyway. There's gasps from the audience. The fact that I believe within five years, British people won't get to own their own private vehicle. Nobody here can quite believe the scale of the descent of the UK. And it makes me feel kind of a bit better that at least I'm over here helping to talk to you. Now, I think some of the connection is bad. I think some people are struggling. So I'm just gonna muddle on through because you know what, shit happens and life isn't always perfect. And mine certainly hasn't been. Um, I should tell you actually about my book, Ruder. <laughs> now, I've always said that this is not a place to, um, yeah, everybody's saying that the Wi-Fi is not great here. I don't know if I can help that. So I'm just gonna plow on through. If you need to go and do something else, that's far more interesting in the UK. Um, I'm not sure I've got much competition, so you do you. I, there's nothing I can do about the Wi-Fi, guys. We're gonna have to suck it up. Uh, also, you don't really need to see my face to hear me. What we could also probably agree is that it might be well improved without looking at my face, like just the audio. That might be better, like that whole face for radio thing. That might be a truth too. Um, I wanted to just talk to you briefly about Ruda. So Ruda is coming. Um, some people are saying, just refresh it. You guys are so fussy. Seriously, what am I supposed to do? Um, the um, Ruda is coming, the book. I filed some of the first draft to a gentleman who's helping me edit Ruda, which is coming. And he gave me a call the other day and said, um, he said, uh, Katie, I'm just wondering, we ought to have this chat. So I wondered what was coming or whether I'd written something that was so offensive, maybe I'd even lost my own editor. Uh, but he said, it, you know, you have a lot of issues. <laughs> you have a lot of unresolved issues and you've sort of written them here. And I don't know whether you want to let people know how many unresolved issues you have. <laughs> so... If you've read Rude, you'll know that I've got issues. And if you've been part of Katie's Arms, you'll know that I've got issues. It's not going to be like breaking news to any of my family here. I think Ruder probably goes the next level and deep, deep dives into some more of those issues. Or certainly I just write like I speak now, right? Which is without filter. You're getting the whole damn thing. 
Um, but clearly the new book's going to come with some advisory, like you're going to read about my issues. If you thought I was perfect, you're going to struggle with Ruda because <laughs> all it was going to do is basically do the same as what Ru did, which was um, make you feel better about your life. Because whatever you've done, I've done bloody a hundred times worse. If you've been fired from a job, I've been fired from like 15, maybe 20 of them. Uh, if you've divorced somebody, that's going to be all right too. I've got that covered in the book. The book Ruder is going to be, um, and I, I don't really hate people that try and sell their books. I really not. I really don't give a shit if nobody buys it. Um, I just wanted to get this stuff written down. It's written as a basic self-help guide in a piss-taking kind of way of how to survive modern life, like the shit storm that we live in. That's what this book is. So each chapter is basically my massive mess ups or fuck ups and then how to get through them and when it's happening to you. So if you feel crap about yourself, how to deal with that. When people are being freaking unkind and you hate everybody on your WhatsApp group and everybody on your Facebook community group is an asshole, how to deal with that, how to deal with assholes in the playground, how to deal with assholes at work. In fact, maybe the book is largely a lot about dealing with assholes. Uh, it also talks about the stuff that's happened to me or that I've caused to be happened to me because obviously I have to own my shit because I created all of it. But in terms of being fired, it deals with that. Being taken to court, it deals with that. Uh, losing every job I had deals with that. Uh, taking other people's husbands, it deals with that. So it's all out there. I mean, it's it's naked. It, it It's very naked. Um, and we'll get that out at some point soon, hopefully. And there's also been a lot of, uh, the, my initial book, which no shop would stock in the UK, like everyone rejected it because obviously I'm a Nazi, an Islamophobe, a fattist, a sexist, um, a white supremacist, uh, what else am I? Islamophobic, a racist, bigot, fascist. Because I'm all those things, Waterstones wouldn't stop the book. Um, it also, it was still the best seller for the publisher and it sold out. And it now exchanges on eBay for, which for like $500 and, that, and that's not cool. So we're trying to get some more reprints done so that if you want it, you could read it without having to pay a billion pounds for it because that's ridiculous. Um, so yes, yeah, so the books are coming and I'm really trying my best. Um, but I should warn you that Ruda is exactly that. <laughs> if you want to read about my issues, you can read all of them there. Um, I wanted the chapter of this, uh, what are we on, 10 past. I'm going to try and do questions, I promise. Somebody just wrote, die. <laughs> no, you asshole, I won't. I can't die because I was not born. I landed. I am immortal and I am eternal. And your hatred, darling, makes me stronger. And the fact that you're on my Instagram page watching me whilst writing die tells me that I'm winning and you're losing. Now go and take your sticky little tiny penis, go and see your mum, and she wants you to pick up the tissues around your bed. Off you pop now, my darling. I don't want you here on my feed. Please go away. Please leave the room and let the adults have a conversation. Thank you so much. Um, this uh, little episode of Katie's Arms <clears throat> is um, called Try Not To Be A Bastard. And that's just, um, Kind of that, that's kind of the topic that I wanted to talk about. Try not to be a bastard. And I think it's a really um, good, you know, moral for our time, right? It's, it, <laughs> I just need to have a little drink because it's 85, I know, sorry to be a bragging sod, 85 degrees here in California. Oh. Hmm. So try not to be a bastard. And the inspiration for this was a lady in a hotel foyer where I was staying in um, a place called Grass Valley, which is actually a gold mining town and has lots of Cornish people here historically. And so they sell Cornish pasties. How about that? Um, so try not to be a bastard. So I was in the lobby of the, the hotel, the foyer, whatever you call it. It's just a regular hotel, not, not smart or fancy or anything. And I'd come in from a run, so I'm kind of sweaty. I'm breathing all over everybody. People are trying to have their breakfast. I can see that's a bit obnoxious. I didn't have too many clothes on either, so there's kind of a lot of flesh. The thing with the whole lockdown bullshit um, means that I have gone the other way. It's making me take things off. So there's a lot more of my skin on show and it's kind of old, so, you know, suck that up. It's making me wear not wear shoes, which used to be like a, a weird vegan homeschooling thing, but I'm doing it now. So basically, if I have to put a mask on, something else is coming off. Like it could be my shorts. I don't really give a shit. Um, so that's happened. So I was in the hotel lobby, largely undressed, having come in from a run and sweating. Um, and I saw this woman bustle up to the desk where a lady just been helping me, getting me some damn shampoo for this mop on my head. 
and I saw her and I saw her anger. I saw her rage. I saw her bastardness coming out of her skin. I could smell it. I could smell the bastard coming off her. So she goes up to that damn desk with the sweet little lady that just gave me a freaking little hotel shampoo and she wasn't doing so well to be fair that lady she looked rough as all hell and she was sweet as a thing anyway this bustly bastard lady comes up gets behind in front of that desk and starts shouting at the sweet old lady behind the desk to say mow, 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 your management you should tell that woman that woman and as soon as i heard that i thought right not having that so i'm now going back in and all i'm trying to do at this point physically is i want that woman away from the desk i don't want her imposing her bastardness on someone else. Um, I don't want to physically violate her, though I'm perfectly willing to. Um, and I want her to step back from her bastardness. So now I'm herding her in the lobby in front of the breakfast room and everybody who's eating, just trying to calm her and herd her away from the desk, which I did. She's still shouting at this point that I'm selfish. I don't care about other people. Everybody else is going to die. People are sat there eating their breakfast because with COVID, as we know, is a very sophisticated, very sophisticated seasonal flu, very sophisticated. It knows that when you walk into a restaurant, it can't possibly infect you if you've got your mask on. But if you sit down and take your mask off, the COVID knows that it mustn't come anywhere near you. Anyway, they're all sat there, <laughs> not eating. I'm now herding the bastard away from the desk, threatening to physically violate her, but not saying that, just showing my presence. And now she's running away and her husband's running away and they've gone to hide behind the breakfast burritos. So, uh, and my message to her, of course, is, is the message that we, you know, share here, I think, or even if you hate me and disagree with me, it doesn't really give a shit about that either. My message to her is that, you know, she, can you own your issues? And if you want to stay indoors, that's great. If you want to hide in your room, that's great. Don't impose that on me and don't be haranguing a beautiful member of the hotel staff about me. Like if you've got a problem with me, it does need to come direct to me for me to fix that. Or, as I'm now going to do, threaten to physically violate you and make you hide behind a breakfast burrito. So that lady was the inspiration for my don't be a bastard. And, and so it's a message to everybody out there. You know, just have a little think tomorrow as you're going about the place. If you're about to open your mouth and say something unkind, think, mm, let's not be a bastard. Do the opposite. Do the kill it with kindness. Buy some flowers and give them to someone randomly. They'll think you're a freaking weirdo and they will be suspicious that you're trying to like poison them in some sort of Salisbury knob chop poisoning event. But just do something the opposite of being a bastard because it feels really good. I do it loads. People often think I'm weird when I'm talking to them or giving them things for no reason, but it's a lot of fun. Kissing people as well, that works. Um, and yes, I don't need to go into that other than that can definitely help people. Now, mother, if you're watching this, as we all know, Katie's arms is not for you. Mother, go, go and do gardening, watch Monty Don. We're not supposed to be on here. We have discussed this, haven't we? So that was Don't Be a Bastard. I wanted to also catch you up on Rodeo, uh, which has been an absolute revelation to me. Uh, rodeo, it turns out, is the hottest thing you could ever get. Like, I went to Rodeo the other day there must have, I don't know how many people were in the crowd. There must have been thousands and thousands of bloody brilliant Americans in this huge rodeo arena under the scorching sun. All of the men were just hotter than, like you could literally, purely through osmosis, I think, I just got testosterone, like Casta Semenya right now with her internal testes, obviously a man running as a woman, but can't say any of that because obviously you have to go to jail immediately. Uh, I, I think I've probably got more testosterone than Casta Semenya at this point, just by being in the testosterone soup of rodeo and and just being around men, being men in, in very excellent jeans and excellent buckles and hats and it was just terrific. I so want to pick up, I think I, did I mention this to you guys? I think I did somewhere along the line. If I could pick up 20 million British people, which are sort of the decent ones. Like I reckon the UK, they say, has got 63 million headed to 72 million. That's a load of shit, obviously. The country's obviously got around 85 million with all the illegals coming all the time and everybody having 55 billion children that no one ever declares because it's cheaper to stay off the system and off grid. But if I could pick up 20 million Brits, which is like the percentage of Brits that I think are decent, like a third of the country are decent, I would bring them to rodeo just for the day 
just to sit there and remember what it's like to be around real men who can dive off of horses to wrestle a small bullock to the ground and get all of its four feet off the floor and women riding their horses without care or underwear. I mean, how fabulous. They're called buckle bunnies. What I wouldn't give. I always say I don't want to live my life again because it's so bloody exhausting, darlings. And the whole being beheaded thing and, you know, having everything taken, it's quite tiring. It's been tiring, darlings. But if I could go back and be a buckle, a 23-year-old buckle bunny <laughs> for a season. Is there such a thing as seasons in rodeos, like ski season? I don't know. I don't know why I'm looking over there. It's not someone to ask. Um, I would definitely do that. Everybody must go to rodeo. Go to rodeo as soon as you can, as soon as you're allowed to fly somewhere or from figure out a way to get to America without freaking asking permission from some twat in a wig in some cheap polyester suit in Downing Street. Bloody go. Go to rodeo and you will feel better. Just, just being around real men. Because when you stand amongst these real men at rodeo, you look around and you go, no one is taking this shit away from Americans. Nobody's going to take private vehicles away from Americans. No one's going to take weapons away from these men. Hmm? No one's going to tell these men that men can now be women and run as girls in races. Hmm. And if any man tried to become a girl and run in a girl's race, these men would sort them out pretty quick. So it was just really uplifting. And to see the women as well, just dressed beautifully, beautiful hair, all thick and lovely, all their little tops on with their tiny tops and these brilliant jeans, just being super attractive to be around these brilliant men. It was just restorative. So it's not very helpful to someone who's sitting in, you know, Luton uh, and hating the world around them and feeling like they're being shoved out of their own country to say, go to rodeo and feel better because no one's allowed to go to freaking Waitrose for more than two hours without 85 masks and scuba gear. I'm just kind of putting it in your minds that salvation lives on even though you can't see it and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to let you feel some of it through me somehow I'm trying to be a conduit for freedom my darlings um I wanted to talk to you about Beverly Hills as well Beverly Hills is a ridiculous situation I mean my gang in Beverly Hills the conservatives of Beverly Hills are obviously brilliant um we did I did two nights of stand-up at the Lux on Sunset which sold out and it was brilliant just to see the room pissing themselves laughing a lot that was said that was inappropriate. There was a lot of oversharing from me about smear tests and things which are not necessarily the appropriate comedy for conservatives on Sunset Boulevard in one of the smartest hotels, but we all have to push the boundaries, darlings, don't we? But the weird things about other Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills types, are like they talk about the vax as if it's a freaking pair of sunglasses or a handbag. So they go, did you get it? Did you get it? And, um, so they go, uh, did you get the Moderna? I got the Moderna. Oh, I got the Johnson & Johnson. I got the uh, AstraZeneca. And they talk about it like by brand, like by brand, as if, as if they're buying something and different brands are going to be like more elevated than others. LVMH, oh, did you get the Gucci? Oh, and now I've taken to doing it. If someone tells me any vaccine they've got, whilst I'm being open-minded and obviously everybody can do what they like, <laughs> if they say, oh, I got the J&J, &J, I go, oof. Mm. <laughs> and just go really quiet or if they go oh I got the AstraZeneca I just ooh, mm. and, and just look concerned and slightly off to the distance so <laughs> or you can take it one step further but you don't need to do this so if someone goes oh I got the Pfizer you go oh right okay so and you're no no, no headaches no okay brilliant that's great and then walk off. But I actually think the, oh, concerned face, look to the distance, eyes off slightly, and walk away. That's, that's the line that kills them. And then they, did, why, did I, is there something? And just leave them with that. Leave them with their thoughts about, shit, should I have had that injectable liquid that I don't actually know what the shit it is, or for something that wouldn't have killed me anyway, or am I so fine? <laughs> so practice that practice, oh, concerned face and silence. One of the most powerful things, says the woman who never stops talking, is silence. So if you just have a couple of lines to deliver and then you leave someone with silence, that silence will be the thing that crushes their soul and their heart. And actually it's a good bit of advice for life, right? Is if someone's being super unkind to you or they're trying to goad you on a Facebook page or they're trying to, well, I'm doing this because I'm this and I'm so fancy and I'm this or I've stayed inside and I've sanitized everything and I've told them they can't come because I'm so freaking holier than thou and I'm on the moral high ground because I've told everybody they can never speak to me again and I've been indoors solidly for four and a half years straight and I'm just, you know, a Puritan and all I see is my cats and that makes me brilliant. 
Just let them go. Let them go. Let them sit over there quietly. Even delete them. Remove them as friends. Unfriend. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about their feelings. Let them worry about their own feelings. Just get rid of the people in your life that are pulling you down, my darlings. You only need five people in your life, if that. You can probably buy two of them, darling, down the local knocking shop. And the rest would love you more than ever, no matter what you do. Have a little look at the people you surround yourself by. Give some silence to them as your gift, you know, for May. What are we in? Are we in April still? Or did we get to May? Christ knows. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know where I am. I've had the same clothes for 62 days now in a small suitcase. I don't even know what month it is. God knows how we're doing this. Give them the gift of silence for May. Yes, let's say May. The May. You're going to silence as your response. You're not going to be goaded. You're not going to be drawn in to angry conversations with dickheads or bastards. And you are going to remove some people who you don't need in your life. Think about COVID the way you might have tidied your garage or you might have tidied your drawers. It is time to tidy your life, my darlings. Separate yourself from the nasty bastards who pretend to be your friends and are actually just trying to draw you down or have never had a nice thing to say to you, just snarky comments that they share on a different WhatsApp group. Get them out of your life. Right, hold on before I dehydrate. Mm. So... Yes, I can down a pint pretty quickly. Um, I needed to tell you a couple of other things that I wanted to share with you. Oh, and I've done a very grown up thing as well. I've brought books. <laughs> Check me out. Check me out in the local Weather Spoons with my books. <laughs> so not trying to flog them either. I just want there's one of them I want you to read or think about reading or don't buy it. Try and scab it off someone else because I don't want to give the guy the money. But um, so there's a couple of things. Anyway, I just wanted to share my schedule in case anybody's watching and um, in case they might be able to come find me or I can come give you a cuddle. Uh, you'll have seen I've smeared myself up against literally Everybody on this planet, Mexico, German, well, not Germans, I don't cuddle German people, or short people. Uh, short women, yes. Short men, no. We know. Katie's arms, we don't do nipple height. That's a rule. That's how you know Sadiq Khan is a complete git. That's how you know Fauci's a git. That's how you know, well, really any short people. I don't do short people. Anywho, the schedule coming up, Murrieta on the 21st with Pastor Tim Thompson. If you're in Murrieta nearby, come along seven o'clock at the church. Uh, it's probably going to be round. You might be standing. Just suck it up, babes. You know, suck it up. We can all stand. That's why you've got legs. That's why you've got feet. Suck it up. We don't need a chair. We weren't born with a chair on our ass, were we? Um, that's the 21st. Then I'm headed to LA for a stint. I'm hoping to get out to Long Beach. So if you're on Long Beach on the 2nd of May, I don't know if it's daytime or evening. I'm trying to get to you there. Um, if it's daytime, then expect me to be more or less nude, to be honest. And if that puts you off, again, stay home, own your issues. Um, and from LA, I'm gonna spin to Florida. So Florida, May, I'm in Florida. And if I'm near you, come see me, I will find you. Local groups are joining together to try and get me in, get me heard. Uh, I'm cheap as chips to keep, I'll sleep anywhere, I'll eat anything. So uh, I'm not one of the asshole speakers that charges loads of money and stands in a posh conference room, expects everyone else to come to them. All right, boys? Shapiro, you hear me? <laughs> yes, studio monkeys. Um, so Florida for like most of May, headed to DC for a bit to see my favourite congressmen and women, Boba, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Louis Goma, La Malfa, Good Eggs, uh, and maybe try and take down some of the ridiculous fencing around the Capitol or maybe go and, you know, make a few um, of our National Guard, well, America's National Guard, feel better about the fact they stood there for absolutely no reason whatsoever, but because Biden's a pillock, demented and doubly incontinent. Uh, and then I think there's going to be some kind of grand finale. And I don't know if it's the end of this trip. Uh, they'll probably arrest me when I get back to the UK anyway. So uh, come visit me in prison. We could do some prison gigs. <gasps> what a great idea. OK, this is a great idea. So if you are a prison and you're expecting me, let's talk venues. Hmm? We could do some great stuff in prisons. Like you have those like central things with the ceilings, with the wire. That's going to work. I just need a speaker system, really. And a wine. So let's do some speaking engagements in British prisons. How cool would that be? So like I've been banned from everywhere. I'm not allowed to do an event anywhere because Antifa come and burn it down or rape the owner of the venue or whatever. I'm banned from Wales. I'm banned from South Africa. I'm banned from Twitter, I'm banned from PayPal. But if I got put in prison and we could do events in prison, 
That'd be epic. Someone's asking how tall I am. I'm five foot eight tall. I don't know what my body fat is, but yes, we can agree it's not high. Uh, yes, I definitely eat. I eat loads. I've just eaten a, what have I just eaten? A eggs Benedict. It's just that I burn it. And this morning I've been running around in California in the wildlife, hopping over snakes and diving through waterways and God knows what. So it just comes off. I do eat. Don't concern yourselves. Um, Colorado, there's a big finale event in a massive venue uh, with a bar and the owner doesn't serve Democrats anymore because they nearly bankrupted his business with lockdown. And so it's going to be glorious. I don't know if that's the send off, but if you can get to Colorado, I promise you that one's going to be off the hook. And we're going to get tickets to up for that shortly. I don't think we're going to have enough tickets. I don't know if we can maybe do a two nighter. I don't know. Right. Um, so I just wanted you to know two things. One, recall Newsom uh, from one of my husband's um, Kevin Kiley. He's a Californian legislator. Legislator. I don't have legislature. He's in the legislature, so he's a legislator. Is that right? Yes, he's an assemblyman. Anyway, he's also my other husband here. I love him deeply. This isn't Kevin. This is the dickhead, Gavin Newsom, who's going to be recalled because 2.2 million brilliant, brilliant Americans recalled his ass. And so he should be fired and he will be fired. And it's utterly brilliant. And I love every single one of you that signed that petition. And I love the gentleman behind this, Kevin Kiley. He's an absolute legend. And I will bring you much more of Kevin as soon as I get my hands on much more of him. And then the other thing that's is quite important. This is the grown up moment. Um, I'm five foot 11 and a half. That's okay. That's okay. I just, listen, I just can't do whatever this is. Where are my nipples? There. Mm, it's a bit weird. I guess them lower than they were. That's a weird thing to do. And also, oh yes, the helicopter willy things. Not that that's related to my nipples, but so this is my nipple height here. And if you're below that, I can't, I can't speak to you. I can't, not if you're a man, just, and even if you've really worked hard on your arms, no. Um, helicopter willies, yes, don't send the pictures. So although I joked about it and helicopter willies are definitely something everybody should do, definitely do that. Definitely don't send me pictures because you can end up in a load of shit and I don't want that for you, darlings. Leave that to me. Leave the prison stuff to me, darlings, because I really don't give a damn. So this is the homework, my darlings. Don't buy it because we don't want to give this bastard any money. The Fourth Industrial Revolution by Klaus Schwab, founder and executive tosspot, oh no, sorry, chairman of the World Economic Forum. Let me put it here. But um, If you can get a copy of this without giving this guy any money, please do. It will help explain what the shit is going on. And the shit that's going on, of course, is that this has all been planned. It's all been structured. And the basic idea is they take away from you everything you ever had. So my premise that within five years, British people will lose their right to own a private vehicle. And currently, the reason there's a seven mile radius deadline on the UK citizens, if it's still there, is that they're trying to train you for a time when you're only allowed to use state transport and you're not allowed to go further than X miles from your own home and you will need paperwork to go anywhere when we get full communism. But if you go to the back of this book, to the thing that calls Appendix Deep Shift, if someone's got this or can get this for free, get it up on my Instagram, find a way of people being able to read this without anyone having to pay any money for it, this is the bit you need to read, Deep Shift. And it basically goes through what's gonna happen in the next five to 10 years that's basically gonna screw everything that we know. Take away your cars, put um, additional memory, implant it into human skulls, uh, wearable internet, uh, take away roads. Yeah, we did that. Homes all connected, people connected to state uh, transport services, eventually us becoming designer beings. So we'll no longer create babies normally, we'll do them by design. Um, and that eventually we become kind of hacked humans, right? And so that we end up servicing the robots and the AI that will actually govern us. This is very instructional. If you care to read it, if you think it's a load of crap and conspiracy theory, that's fine too. I'm not trying to shove it down anyone's neck as the Bible. It ain't the Bible. But it does uh, give you an insight into the craziness that's going on behind the scenes. Remember, every time you shift away from petrol, diesel, stuff you can buy yourself, stuff you can fuel yourselves, if you go to electric, how is it you think that they can update an electric car without you taking it in? What do you think an electric car actually runs on? Who controls what an electric car runs on? What happens when they decide to turn all electric vehicles off and declare that no one owns a vehicle anymore? I'm just, I'm just 
throwing that across the bow, throwing it out there because it sounds wacky. I sound like Alex Jones on acid, but maybe one day it will be, you know that Hopkins woman? She wasn't such an asshole after all. Um, anyway, listen, thank you for staying with me. I'm so sorry um, that I haven't answered questions. We all know I'm a bit shit at that. I'm thinking, you know, what we might have to do one day is do an hour when I've got great Wi-Fi of Katie's arms. And maybe I just, sh I promise that I shut up after half an hour and then you do questions if they're sensible and they're not just telling me to die um, because I've been a terrible failure at questions. Uh, if you'd like my schedule, if you'd like to find out about tickets, if I can help you, katie at katiehopkins.co.uk. Um, and meanwhile, of course, the message, the theme of today, as we'll remember, was don't be a bastard. And, you know, let's try and make other people live that as well. And you can do it just by being the person that opens the doorway to being sweet and kind instead of assholery and telling me a rule I really don't shitting well need to know. Those little sticky circles on the ground, let's remember that those are just sticky circles and that they pull up. Hmm? Let's remember that. Let's remember rules are advisory. Hmm? It's an advice that you might choose not to take. Let's remember you do you and the time for asking permission is over. And everybody else just hang on in there. And one day you'll be at rodeo You'll be amongst the testosterone soup. And like me, you'll turn into Castor Semenya. It's really something to look forward to. Okay, lots of love to everybody. And um, I'll catch up with you on the road very soon.